so if you have played any Daybreak within the past, like, however long it's been released, you are probably very well aware of looping, where you basically just distract the killer for as long as you can, using a variety of things. I can't even, like, list them normally with my voice. Anyways, looping is a very confusing concept. There's a lot of different variables to consider, and I will be trying to help you out with utilizing each variable as much as you possibly can to become a omnipotent sort of celestial being of this stupid Roblox game for the next millennia or something like that. So let's start off with the, the basics of just running around in circles for four minutes. So if you weren't aware, if you press down on the W key or you move your joystick forward, you will go forward. And this is pretty much an essential tool. You're going to be holding forward about 95% of the time while you're looping. And then down in the corner you have your stamina. It'll deplete as you sprint. You basically just get a speed boost and there really isn't much else to it. You want to keep this above zero as much as you possibly can. If you drop below zero, you are basically going to die. Your stamina will recharge a lot slower than it normally will, and you will not have the ability to run, so you basically are forced to either do something really stupid and make the killer just like completely lose their mind or uh, accept death. And the final tool you'll ever really will need while looping is the vault, which, hear me out, when you interact with this, you will vault over the vault, and it will basically just give you distance. It is a key point to running away from the killer. It's integrated in the map design to help survivors just like survive. Anyways, that's about it for the basics, and let's just hop straight into the map designs. So in Daybreak, there's about nine different maps that you could get at any given time. I'm not gonna list them all here. There's probably gonna be something on screen that shows you all the maps. And unless you're like the best improviser ever, you will probably need to spend some time playing this game in order to figure out exactly where certain vaults or loops are and just what will work best for you. Two characters I would recommend when you're just starting out and you don't know the map's layout are probably Ryder and Jonas, because Jonas can help you extend farther with the speed boost and just get to certain vaults if you're not exactly sure where they could be, and Ryder will literally reveal vaults to you with an aura, and he's basically just meant for new survivors. That's about it for the map layouts, just understanding what vaults are safe to use and which ones aren't is a very 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 important thing to do. I see a lot of new survivors going around vaults that just aren't safe enough to loop around and it really screws them over. There isn't much to talk about when it comes to map layouts just because it comes a lot from playing the game and understanding just the map yourself. I can't tell you how each map is going to play out because there's a lot of prerequisites before I can even get into like actual looping skills or whatever. Anyways, let's get on to the characters that you could play that can fundamentally change how you play this game. So there are 20 different like chase characters or characters that fall under the chase category right now as of recording and you know the time the video is made I don't know when that'll be but 20 characters is absurd compared to the the eight or nine that are in uh, undetectable category. Just considering that we have that many characters for like chasing and each of them have their own like fairly unique abilities. It's just like absurd. I kind of grouped all these characters into different categories. First off, we have the beefy characters, basically anyone who can take multiple hits. So you have like Jun, Nathan, Riley, and Amon, pretty much out of the the said group basically they're just for people who play like super risky or dumb it gives you a fallback in case you like are going to get down and there really isn't much outside of that basically just take hits because you can do that now secondly we got characters with like items that they can use or abilities so like jonas kyle and ig are like the three main ones i can think of basically you just want to use them when you think you're going to die or just like as a tool to extend a chase escape chase basically anything chase related besides like 
Kyle's kind of trap. It's a little bit more creative. And next we fall into this like never ending hole of characters who require vaults to use their ability. You have vaulting gives you a speed boost, vaulting turns you invisible, vaulting reveals the killer. There's just so many different vaulting abilities only work after you vault and it's just stupid. It's like over the top. Not over the top, but there's just too many characters that rely on vaults and vaulting to make their ability actually useful. Next we have the characters who really shouldn't be in this category of like chase characters. So I would really consider Callum to be one. He's more of a support character and I think he should be I think he should be kind of moved into that area. And then you got Chao Zheng, which honestly she can be used for either chase or like like helping people out but I prefer to use her for support. The whole chase section is such a broad like descriptor of these characters. There's so many different playstyles you could choose from, so many different like prerequisites you need to meet, so many different just stat spreads and all of that. So there isn't exactly one character that doesn't do like one specific thing or fills one specific role in the game. Just about every chase character or chase ability will help you benefit in one way or another by getting good at one part or one skill of chase, whether it be managing your stamina, holding forward a bunch, using your ability, using vaults well, mind gaming. You've basically given up on trying to make yourself generalist and going like tunnel vision on chase mode. There's a chase character for everyone until there isn't. And at that point, like, what have you done? That's about it for chase characters and just the character section entirely. If you want to figure out which character you'd play the best or which one you might want to try, there's a bunch of guides on YouTube, of course, I've made a few myself. There's Wikipedia pages and there's descriptions of the characters that gives you a lot of insight. I might make a video eventually explaining like abilities and whatnot and just making it kind of like clear on what a character might be trying to do. Anyways, that's about it for this little section. Survivors are stupid. Just play whoever you want to use. All right, we've gotten through all the specifics, all the all the survivor and the map and the, all that junk. So now we're gonna get into the actual meat of the video. How do you prioritize your longevity in Daybreak? So one big point I want to make right now is that the most people you ever want in chase at once is going to be two people. Otherwise, it gives killers too many opportunities, it gets just too crowded, and most survivors will start to play really like sloppily and just mess up a bunch. And that's probably not something you want to do because that means you're not looping good. Another just major thing that comes with looping is try to keep your stamina like somewhat high. Don't waste your stamina for no reason, whether it be just running for no apparent reason, especially when you're near the killer. Also don't try and like run too far from the killer because once the killer finally catches up you're gonna have no stamina to use while actually running around vaults and looping and all of that. You should also adapt a playstyle kind of like dubbed as the patient survivor. Don't try to vault too early ever. Always wait until the killer makes that first like lunge at you before you actually use a vault. Keeping vaults like usable is going to be one of your main priorities. So don't use all three of your vaults at once because it'll get blocked off by the mist and you'll have to transition to either somewhere less safe or die in the process of transitioning. Speaking of transitioning, you should also try to keep an eye on where you're going and where the killer might want you to try to go, whether it be ending loops inward towards the map or ending them more out toward the edges because typically at the edges of the map there's going to be less spots for you to loop there's going to be less vaults to use you're going to want to end a loop while you're either pointing at the direction of the next vault you want to go to or in a safe spot where the killer can't catch up without taking the same vault that you just used Eventually, I'm going to make a video going into like every small detail about looping and chase, but this video is not the one. Basically, just where you're going and your stamina are going to be the main things you're going to think about while looping, or the main things you should be thinking about. Of 
course there's abilities and there's vaulting and numbers and there's a bunch of little things I could get into, but I don't think that people want to sit here and watch me talk about like how many vaults are in a map and what ones are the good ones or something like that. I, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. If you've watched to this point of the video, well, congratulations, you've like graduated Daybreak University or something like that. You get like, you get a diploma and we send you out on your way, run around in Daybreak, play a couple games, just see how you can improve your gameplay by prioritizing your stamina usage and like just where you're going in the game. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for 1,000 subscribe dibbles. This is a major milestone. I don't know what I'm going to do next with my content. Join my Discord server if you want more updates on video progress and just my channel as a whole. But that's going to be it for this video. I don't know what else to say. Thank you for watching. And um, I'll chap ya. I'll chap. Chippity chap. Chip, chip, chip. <laughs>